Good afternoon, Floss Tube. How are you guys today? It is May 2nd and Floss Tube number 40. That would have been in front of me, before me, however you want to put that. You would have seen that a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, I was going to say I might have put some pictures in front too, but I didn't. I didn't put any pictures, just my intro. And then me. Hey, that's why you're here, right? So, I got up this morning and was looking through everything, and we have 50 subscribers on the channel. Yay! So, I will insert a little video in here, and there's no sound or anything. It'll be just a video, and I'll show you the random number generator, and then I'll show you the list I made, and the person's name will go on the video too as to they want and so I would like them to email me I'll put an email down below or they can email me at the shop or they can comment down below hey get a hold of me whatever works for them and I will give it we'll say two weeks so if I don't hear from them by May 16th I will draw another name from that list. I will save the list. Um, and I, I didn't draw a name, I just did a random number generator. Now something that I noticed that I don't know if you guys know is, um, I was messing around on YouTube yesterday, and you can hide who you're subscribed to. And in doing that, the person that you're subscribed to gets a number that you're subscribed to them, but they don't know your name. So they can't see your profile name. That being said, I know there's people that watch my videos all the time, and I don't know if they're not subscribed or if they are subscribed but have their subscribes hidden. And therefore, I can't see their name when I do my look at who's subscribed. So I think for future um, drawings, like when we hit 100 people, I will, instead of just drawing from my subscriber list, I will um, ask everybody to comment at that time a certain word, and then we'll I'll pull up that list and we'll draw from those people. Because I feel like some people might have been missed on this list because they don't know about the settings or they don't. Because I didn't use a word. <laughs> Alright, all that being said, um, that little video will go in and that person will be contacting me to give me info so I can send this to them. Yay! We have 50 people here! Woohoo! Alright, let's get back to normal. Right? Because that's not normal. I don't do a giveaway every day. <laughs> it's not normal for me to come here every day, but I'm here. I'm, I'm, as Michelle says, I'm for it. <laughs> so, what have I done today? And last night, because last night was Friday off the grid. Oh, today I went shopping. So, um, Carolyn from Evertote, Friday off the grid, was opening the store back up yesterday for only for the stuff she has in stock so you can only shop for the stuff that's already listed and once it's gone or sold out it's sold out so I was like oh I should go see if there's anything that I really really need like you know the cross stitch um, embroidery in red that she was gonna do for the red sampler that I'm gonna start in 2021 sometime I need the tote now though right <laughs> So I went and looked, and um, she didn't have any of the medium or large red ones, but she had a blue small or a red small, and I like the red one, and eventually I'm going to do a red sampler, and it's going to be gorgeous, and I'm going to really enjoy stitching it, but I already have a blue one picked out, I had bluebird sampler, but heart and head and the tote that was available was only small so it's eight by eight 
fits an 8x8, so it's a little bit bigger, 10x12 I think it said, which is perfect because this is a 7x2.5 inch, so we'll say 8x3, <laughs> perfect, that will fit perfectly in that little tote, and that's what I needed, right, so I bought it, <laughs> and I bought a thread keep too. Because I've been wanting one of her Friday Off the Grid Thread Keeps as well. So, maybe I'll have to do that one after. But, like I said, all this is for 2021. Because there's no new starts for 2020. And I'm five months in. This is the fifth month. I can do it. Right? I can do it. You guys will keep me too busy. Right? I'll have too many orders to ship that I just won't have time to start new stuff. I can only work on stuff I'm... I'm <laughs> already started okay um so what have i done today besides shopping because apparently i needed to spend money right like we all do we all we all need to go shopping right don't forget bugs that stitch <laughs> all right i did not do anything on this one nothing yesterday so still need some carrots my grandma said I have two weeks before plants will be ready, so I have two weeks to finish planting my carrot garden, right? <laughs> um, we usually plant around here about May long, so around the 20th or so. And um, she's like, yeah, two weeks, and we, we won't have a risk of floss. So, or floss, frost, F-R-O-S-T. So, um... I'm going to, in the next couple days, figure out what I need, because she always starts plants early for me. Sorry. Um, she has a great big greenhouse with a wood stove heat, or maybe it's electric now. It used to be wood stove. Something. Um, anyway, she has a big greenhouse, and she has an amazing yard. And, um, yeah, I'm not her. <laughs> we had a plant in the house at one point. And my husband's like, I can't believe that thing has lived for X number of years. Because <laughs> I would forget to water it all the time. So now there's no plants in my house. I I remember to feed my children and my husband and myself. Not plants. They, they're on their own. <laughs> I'd probably do really good with cactus. As long as my husband didn't have anything to do with it. Because he likes to overwater stuff. And I'm like, no, no, no. They don't need, like to drown in it for five minutes <laughs> so uh yeah cactus would be my plan anyway i'm gonna try gardening again this year <laughs> um and it's kind of funny we chuckle about it because my garden does great for a few weeks and then it kind of dies off i'm hoping that my attention span is good enough that i can you know get into my routine and i do love this routine i go out in the morning after my husband's gone to work and i go and water and i mean kaden loves water actually he was really cute he'd hold his hand in the water as i was watering so that the water would all run down his arm <laughs> I'm like, isn't that a little bit cold at 9 in the morning? But whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, I would go out about 8, 9 in the morning and water for 20 minutes, half an hour by myself. Or Caden would be out there running in boots when he was like a year and a half old. Um, and then in the evening, at the end of the day, at like hmm, 7.30, that way it's not too bright or hot and uh, the water would go well. Um, so yeah, I, I, when I'd get into a routine, I'd, I'd go, 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 go with this routine while well, I'd be doing it when I was pregnant. So then, you know, doing August and doing what? <laughs> Usually about the middle of July, I would stop going out and other people would end up going out like my older daughter or my husband. So this year I won't be pregnant, right? I have two a two-year-old, well, just about three-year-old and just about a year-old. So I should be good to go. It'll be a good year for the garden. Um, but what I was going to say is my other plants, they'll die off. My broccoli won't do the best, that kind of thing. But the ones that do very well for me are zucchini and spaghetti squash. Any of the squash family, they do great. Cucumbers, awesome. So... Maybe I can get the rest of them to keep up with those guys. We'll see. 
back to stitching. Sorry, got a lot of sidetrack there. <laughs> I seen the flowers, and I was like, oh, plants. <laughs> um, I got a little bit of stitching in this morning, so I have started my June hands-on design a year in celebration. Sorry, I'll hide myself so you guys can see the stitches. Did it focus yet? Ah! Anyway, you guys can see that there's waves. I have one more wave to do down here, and then I'll do my counting, do my little word here. What does that one say? It says... Oh, it goes across the bottom. <laughs> it goes this way. And it says beach, and then I have another corner thing in here. And then I will go on to the next color. That's how I like working these ones is color by color. And I'm on color one of six, right? So that's where I am on that. And hopefully I get a few more stitches in today. But um, I'm going to put that down for a little bit because I haven't put any stitches in my focus piece or my baby for the month. So I haven't put any focuses in baby yet, so I will. Um, I really want one of Carolyn's uh, Friday Off the Grid thread keeps, their little wooden one. And I also have mine. If you guys haven't seen these, they're up on my site. And they have sits holes, and then they have the corner gauge. So mine isn't actually a thread keep, it's a corner gauge. So what you do is you say that's your fabric and you want to start two inches in. So you find the two inch mark, which would be there. And you put it on your top corner, line up your lines. And down there where the bug is pointing, ah, my finger's not working with this camera, down here. Is where you would start your your counting for your edge of your border. Um, let's show you on this fabric. So with this one, I started an inch in. So let's go an inch. I'll kind of line it up before I show you guys. So see. I started about an inch in, and that's where I started my counting. So now my next one was two inches over. So now I don't worry about going down in depth. I just go, okay, I'm two inches over. Oh, I could. I could do that. I could go an inch in. There we go. All right, two inches over and an inch in. And that's where I start. Back that up a little bit, right? Ah, wrong hand. See? And then same with the next one. Two inches over, an inch down, and that's where I start. Um, I haven't, but I should use this rather than counting, you know, 32 strands. <laughs> Six, or No, it was 32 stitches, 64 strands, because I was going 16 stitches for one inch, and then 16 stitches for the other inch, and then starting. But I could just use my corner gauge. That'll be faster. At least thinking now. I wasn't this morning when I counted it. <laughs> but I just used my stitch counters. Have you guys seen those? I have two in stock right now. I have a white one and a black one. Um, so these I make or made. I might make a bunch soon, depending on how they go. So I have a little bead on top with a butterfly. And then these are the colors. My white one has white beads with the white round bead and the white round bead up there. And then my black one has black beads with the black round bead and black round bead up there. And needles. And these are 22 counts, so they do spread the strands a little bit, but it just goes back in, in my opinion. And so you put one where you're starting, and then you count over or down or whatever you need to do. And what I do is I count over first, put this one in. Then I take this one out and count down and put this one in. That tells me where I got to start. If um, sometimes I'm kind of silly about it and I leave it in the hole that I need to start in, and then I'm going, well, now how do I get my needle in? So you can just stop one stitch before or one stitch above, and then you know where your needle goes into without having to try and pull this out and remember where it is. But up to you. 
these are great. I use them in my frame or in hand. This morning I was counting in hand. So they work. And the reason why I use square beads is so that they're easier to hold on to rather than trying to hold a round bead. And um, these I use for weight, right? I use these for counting. And then if I need to leave it there, this just kind of hangs over the frame or my hand or whatever. And it's just extra weight. You can also leave all the beads up there and just let that part hang down. Whatever works. So I do have those listed up on the site. If you have any trouble, like if you're looking for them and can't find them, just message me. I will help you out. And like I said, I have a black and a white in stock. But I have a couple other color combinations pictured in there that if you want, I could most likely make them. Okay, I think I think I'm done that part. We'll see. Keep myself organized. Alright, so that's my thread keep and how I use it and all that stuff. And this is my um Flip Buddy. I wanted to say Buddy Flip, but um, I got it from Michelle Bendy. I asked them if they could find ladybugs, blue ladybugs, and they did. So I got them to make that for me. They do do the lady that does do them. She's on Etsy, and I, her store is Bags Bags Plus. B A G Z P L U S. They are an American company. Now, this is spaced out, too. There's another pocket row in the middle of each of these, but I didn't need to use it because, well, actually, you can see it there for one floss. <laughs> this project is fully kitted up like that. Otherwise, I usually just pull my floss out. Well, actually, that's not true. I used two of them, right? Um, this one, I did a few stitches. I did not do very many. Um, just... We were out last night. We went to my parents and did our social distance wiener roast. So it was nice. Um, haven't really visited my parents since everything started. And, I mean, that was second week of March, middle of March. <laughs> so almost two months. And, I mean, we all live in the same town and we see each other often. So to go that long without hanging out and visiting with my parents was kind of like, wow. We've actually seen Spencer's parents two or three times in that time so um I did do a few stitches in here right in here I did I finished up here and come down here and now I'm working this way and then I'll continue on here and then it goes across here and then I think I'm all done across here to the middle of it which is what I'm doing I'm just going to the middle right now listen to me all ambitious here is the long frame adapter for those of you wondering about it. This one is a 14 inch and these are 15 inch, 15 centimeter stretcher bars. And I think they're open to about 8 inches right now. That's just where this fabric works. Um, this fabric was really thin so I just cut a couple pieces of um, fabric that I had on hand and just kind of tucked it in underneath. And it holds it great. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So that's where she is. Um, and then I seen someone. They posted on one of the groups that they took this and they cut this off. Now, I really hope she did it at the furthest that she could use it. Um, because these are adjustable, right? It depends on where you get your fabric as to how far out this is going to be. So if she did it as far out as this can go, right, say maybe for sake of conversation there, and cut it off, well, now she's restricted to whatever this frame is doing. So that works great because this is where some people have an issue with the long frame adapter. They go to flip it and this gets caught on their arm, like the arm of the chair or their leg or wherever. So that was a good idea. 
I just hope she's making sure that she's got that as far out as it will ever go and then she doesn't ever have to worry about um, not being able to put it on. These frames are completely usable with this without the long frame adapter. The long frame adapter is good. Right now I have it way over here. Um, later on when I'm working just over here, then I can move my long frame adapter about the middle and then I just have this sitting in front of me, right? So I think of it like a typewriter. Right now I have it all the way over here and I'm working here. Well, actually I'm working there, but I'm working on my recliner. <laughs> so I sit out a ways, but um, I can just loosen this and slide all this over, say to about there, and then tighten it, and now my work's right in front of me all the time. So that's the purpose of the long frame adapter, and to make it so you can have the really long rods. Sorry, the really long rods, like 110, which is about double this um, on that stand. And anyway, in the picture, she had this cut off. Sorry, I'll show you this one. She had this part cut off. And um, she's like, does anyone else do this? I didn't see that part at first. What I seen was um, the long frame adapter with the clamp sitting against a wall. And then she had another shorter one right in front of it with the long frame adapter and a clamp. And I was like, yep, I do that. I didn't comment, I don't think, but... I said that in my head, and I'm like, oh, wait, she wasn't talking about that. But this is something I do do. Instead of pulling my frame out of my long frame adapter and all that, if I have a project on my stand, I have it all set up, and I either have it blocking the one stand so my son has a hard time going to look out the window. He doesn't have to go look out that window. He just likes to go look out that window. Um, so... What I'm thinking of doing is when I'm done stitching for a while, be a couple hours or something, I will just undo my clamp and pull the whole system off and set it against my bookshelf. And then when I'm ready to stitch again, pick the whole thing up and put it on my bar. So I do that. <laughs> um, a lot of people talk about being able to put the Lowry where there's like out in the living room and stuff like that. That kind of situation is good. You undo your clamp, you pull it off, you set it against the wall, you have your stand against the wall. You don't even, probably don't even need to move your stand depending on how it's set up. So, that's where those things are. It is now 2 o'clock and Baby Bug has been sleeping for about three and a half hours. So my guess is she's going to wake up soon. So I better wrap up what I'm doing and um, get ready to be mama again instead of fun Alicia that loves to stitch and has all this free time. <laughs> um, I did this morning go and do a bunch of stuff in the store and organize because I've been just, you know, taking stuff out there and putting it in there. But I did some organizing. I put a couple shelves up all by myself. Actually, I'm pretty handy like that. I, um, we had a, I don't know if you remember trailers or if you've been in a trailer and you'd walk in and there's a kitchen and this peninsula would come out, kind of like an island, but it's still attached to the wall. That's what we had when we moved in, about where that stand is. And, um, to me it just cut off the space too much, made it two rooms instead of one big nice open room. So I took it out. And I bought a few cupboards, and I screwed them together with a bookcase on each end and made a top. My husband looked at it and went, oh. <laughs> um, naturally, I can't say that. He helped me cut the top, but all the rest of it, I just did it while he was at work. So, yeah, I'm pretty handy. I know this morning I was like, can you come out and look at me and see how I'm going to reorganize this? And he's like, okay, you're going to put up a couple shelves? What are you telling me for? I was hoping he'd do it for me, but he didn't, so I did it. And I think his words were, yeah, maybe tonight I can work on that for you. Mm, no, doesn't work for me. I'll just do it myself then. <laughs> All right, guys, I will let you go because I know there's lots of floss tube going on, and I've been trying to catch up, 
And I hope you guys are having a good Stitch Mania day too, if that's what you're doing. If you're having a monogamous mania or avoiding mania, I hope you're enjoying it. Alright, have a great day guys. Bye.